Welcome to EVE Online, I'm Major Freak. This is uh, me going through why I use each type of ship. And I'll start with the newest uh, iteration on the Thrasher. It's uh, It's got a little uh, energy NOS, and this little sucker allows me to keep, well, was most of the time, uh, when I'm being nuded by the FOB, all three on. Uh, sometimes it'll turn one off, maybe two. Uh, rarely, but this allows me to put way more DPS on the field as opposed to having a piddly little rocket launcher. Well, it, you know, it has a little bit, but being able to slow down those damn curves that were going whipping around, uh, that'll put way more damage, uh, less less misses. So it's awesome. Uh, the idea behind Titanium Sabot is the range. It just gives me the range and the the curs are vulnerable to kinetic and explosive. So, yay me. All right, next up, um, you can skip uh, this video. I'll just add in just before you leave, um, if you've seen Omni Fits before. Uh, I've unfortunately discovered uh, one of my friends was on the FOB site and was like, you know, we never really get bounties for the defense fleet, even though it's listed as um, half a million for each omen, right? When you click on their info. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. Um, CCP only gives uh, the FOB award to each pilot for killing it. But even though the defense fleet, the one that spawns when you land on the FOB, uh, bounties for, say, the Omens, the Arbitrators, the Argers, it will not award its value. It will reward bounties for the response fleet and, say, if you shoot up the the, the rats hitting your up wall. That'll get bounties at the usual way, you know, every 15 minutes. Bing, there you go. So, yeah, there's that. Um, the reason I will still use a Thrasher, uh, it's got nothing else to do waiting for the FOB to die. I'll, if I can, I'll, I'll kill the Gurs. Um, now I might need an ECM, might need another Weber if I'm wanted to take out an Augur, right? If I'm feeling frisky. Uh, this is the Drone Bunny. Uh, it's got a lot, I don't turn these on, but they've got, it adds way more uh, max targets. So it's that. everything I use is a plate. And of course the ECM boat, ridiculous range, don't need it. Um, it's overpowered, but it deals with the augurs, which have 90 sensor strength. It's ridiculous. I reverse engineered it based on, you know, jam times I can get on them. And yeah, it's they're tough, tough nuts to crack. The reason I use frigates and a thrasher is because the, each ship you warp in, uh, each second ship you warp in, or is it no third, odd numbered, every odd number ship you warp in, it'll spawn something for you. And if you warp in, uh, it, it depends. I haven't nailed it down yet. But every time you warp in a support ship, after, you know, we're waiting five minutes, figuring out what's going on, you warp it in, it'll spawn something, and the light ships will spawn typically light, you know, cruisers. Maybe if you're unlucky, it'll spawn an auger, a cruiser. Very rarely. Eh, whatever. Um, but yeah, um, using frigates lowers your your chances of increasing the frustration of uh, taking down multiple uh, augers, which is no fun. Added to the fact you don't get bounties to them, so kind of pointless. But yeah, um, I, do, I don't need to do this. I have MJDs. I can, at the end of the battle, just line to the next jump gate we need to go to, to the next fob, hit F8, Wait till the land, wait till the the disruption 
uh, goes away. It it will actually prevent you from warping, even though you've MJD 100 kilometers from the curve. So wait till that fleet warp done. And yeah, so rinse, lather, repeat, whatever, done. Um, I don't. You don't need high grade. Mid grades will do. Uh, talum is talisman implants. Highly recommended, of course. Uh, but yeah, the the only reason I upgraded was just for protection. Um, I was trying another fit with a Drekovac, and I really needed the extra uh, the extra cap uh, love, and that supplied it. Right, um, and plus three Lashaks is the optimal. Um, you warp in one, it'll spawn the basic defense fleet, which is anywhere from 15, uh, well, 50 chips total um, after you warped in the third one um, to probably 12, 12 to 15. Uh, I've heard 16, but I haven't seen it yet. I'm still testing. I'm recording each time I warp in and, and you know, see what happens. I'll, I'll make up a list and then, yeah. Every third, uh, every odd, like I'll warp in this one, it'll spawn the base. Warp in this one, nothing. Warp in this one, it'll spawn two, three stuff. Uh, nothing compared to the initial spawn, of course. Now, uh, I guess you found out by now, hopefully, that if you warp in something stupid like, say, Nestor's or an EOS, it'll sp spawn way more than uh, what would typically be spawned. So, yeah, do be very careful of adding Command Battle Cruisers and Nestor's to your team. You could do it. I've seen it done. It's quite ridiculous, actually, but it's overkill. Yeah, all you need is three of the shacks. You're fine. It gives you the buffer. It gives you, because you can put a 1600 uh, plate on it, right? It gives you the massive uh, cap, uh, completely immune to any uh, neutralization. It might get scary if you add in a very rare close range Balgorn uh, response fleet. That, that's the hauler trigger. Um, it's very rare, but it, it, it'll happen. Now then, on to the hauler. The last but not least, it's got the combat probes. Because, you know, I mean, if the hauler shows up early on the FOB and it spawns the response fleet, the hauler will F off along with its miners to a safe spot and sit Dogo, like a freaking dodo bird. And you can go combat probe it mound. Yeah, got nothing else to do. Yeah, go blow it up with support ships and you might get a skin box. That's pretty good. Uh, the Blood Raider Orca skin. Very rare to get, but, you know, kind of cool. It is a fun skin on an Orca. Uh, yeah, built for speed. I mean, I've got ridiculous implants to get it moving faster than any other, any, any other ship of mine. I can send it off to market and uh, dump off the, the modules that are the loot. Um, Adamar come back before the next fob is being even shot at so that's cool and of course i make sure i i don't stray too far from home so i'm not lost out in the boonies okay uh that's the strategy light support ships you don't even i now that i know i i don't get any bounties it's taking a while to process it's it's a hard concept to get around it's like wait a minute get you know wrap my head head around so yeah um warp in blap it if you can kill the curs at your convenience yes otherwise whatever align mgd fleet warp done uh i make it sound easy but it's not um the dps is can be scary at times. Every fob's different. To be aware. This is not a piece of cake. Uh, if you do it right and do it by the numbers, it's it's so, so easy. Um, hopefully I'll make a video about Myrmidons because I've just done Drekovacs. Uh, I'd like to do Myrmidons. Uh, 
I tried it and it failed, but I think I can do it again. I I just got so much on my plate. Um, but I'll try Myrmidon, see how that works. Um, obviously, it'll take much longer than the <laughs> shacks. The shacks take about, oh, less than uh, probably 12 minutes. Maybe 15. I figure 12. And Drex took what 17 minutes for Drex took 17 minutes uh i'm assuming like it i used to do it a long long time ago with four Geddens, and that took me 20 minutes but yeah anyways uh, i'll get her done and i'd like to some somebody commented if i'm gonna redo my solo ishtar fit yeah i think it will eventually <laughs> i'd like to um, yeah, I'll have to watch the video and, and see if, because you learn something, like I just learned about the, well, in hindsight, I should have realized after not seeing any bounties occurring, <laughs> uh, for the rats, I should have, but, you know, we, we learn something new every day, so yeah, I mean, looking back on the video, trying to improve it from theory crafting and uh because i i believe it's possible i mean it's just you know you dump your drones yeah mic warp drive around the around the fog um and just take because it's going to take you so long well just drain the fobs capacitor you know and then you can warp in and well, you'll need an alt. You would not be able to do this completely solo because you'll need to get in and take advantage of the uh, the fobs being drained to get up to speed um, and get in a position where you're outside of the fobs neutralizing before it recharges its batteries. And it probably won't if you time it right um you could probably do it uh solo but i would highly recommend against it i will do it in the video but yeah i would highly recommend while you're practicing on this to have an alt or have a friend to drain the fob in a pod before you go in uh, you know right before you go in so you can, uh, <laughs> you can, and also warp that pod off as soon as you see uh, any rats on the field, because the other ship, the Ishtar, will spawn a uh, response fleet, <laughs> and it will, they will target your your pod. So yeah, do be careful. Anyways, uh, I've got stuff to do. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. Uh, yeah, Myrmidons. I'll try an Ishtar. I'd like to redo the Rattlesnake solo fit. Um, take another look at it. You know, what? We've, I've got this dial down with science now. Um, I'm sure we could look at, you know, and it was, uh, I've already done a video on what the nester looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the Nestor spawn is just, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. When I uh, when I first started, I was doing Geddens, right? And I was like, yeah, the next step up would be Nestor's. Just a natural progression. So. <laughs> yeah, good thing I had those MGDs on. Wow. Yeah, there's some uh, Ashrothy. I actually tried it with Nestor's. It was uh, entertaining to watch. So, yeah. Anyways, have a good one.